Did you hear about the bodega guy in New York City? Yeah. All right. The guy's name is Jose Alba. He's 61 years old, never arrested, never convicted, a bodega owner. He works every day from, I think it's 12 o'clock until 3 in the morning. 12 noon, around the clock, until 3 in the morning, every day. That's how he takes care of his family. So a woman comes in, and she's got a government card, and she wants to buy chips for her son. And the government card doesn't work, so he says, I'm sorry, it's not working. She's infuriated. She goes home, she gets her boyfriend. She fires him up, he comes over to the 61-year-old, he starts yelling at him, gets behind the counter, shoves him, knocks him down, and then blocks him, doesn't let him get out. Now, the person who is coming around to fight on behalf of this crazy lady who goes home because the car didn't work is a gangbanger. He's a career criminal with two prison stints that we know of. He has a history of violent crime. The bodega owner has no choice. He reasonably believes that he's about to be killed. He reasonably believes that he is to be a victim of a felony so he can use deadly physical force. He doesn't have a gun or a knife. He's got a box cutter. He's a store. He owns a bodega. Takes a box cutter, stabs the gangbanger, kills him. Hey, in, in America, that's self-defense. But in New York City, with a progressive DA who's hired with funds by George Soros and the rest of the leftist progressives, this guy goes to Rikers Island. He ends up being charged with intentional murder. The girlfriend is stabbing him. He's got injuries where there is abscesses and infections that are not being treated while he's at Rikers. And but for the outrage, that guy would never have made bail. Bail was 500000 Now, if that doesn't tee you off, nothing I say will. Everybody who is a gangbanger who goes in and smashes cases in jewelry stores and in, in clothing stores and steals stuff, they get bailed. That's even assuming they're arrested. Cash is bailed. They're in or out. They got a gun. They go in, they get out. They go in, they get out, they kill. They go in, they get out, they kill. Nobody says a word. This guy, a businessman, worked his whole life. And you know what he said? He said to the guy who came after him, Papa, I want no trouble. I don't want no trouble. That's the state of mind that the victim was in. And yet, this case would have ended up in a conviction of the bodega owner but for the videotape. It would have been her word, the stabber, because the boyfriend's dead now, against the bodega owner. No one would have believed him. So yesterday, I spoke to the, uh, to the uh, president and the spokesperson for the United Bodega Workers of America. And I said to him, do you have these videos in the bodegas. A bodega is a small store. It's a mom and pop shop. I don't care if you're from Ohio. It's a small store. All right. He said, no, we don't. We don't have money. And I said, of course you don't have money. We have shootings on the subway. The, the, the videos don't work. So I said, you know what? I have an idea. Every day, we hear about illegals coming through the southern border. It's totally open. They get education, medication, housing. They get bussed. They get flown into any area of the country. They get flown to Westchester County, my county, one of the most affluent counties in the country. Okay? And we can't give money for Americans in American stores who are working to defend themselves of course not, because we don't take care of Americans anymore. Why not?